Hello again. Welcome back to the Flying Style Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Mitchell, back with my co-host, Stephen Masley. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And we are back to you guys this week uh, for the upcoming draft. It is coming up this week. Is it Thursday? It is Thursday, the 27th. So we got a big, big talk ahead of us. Uh, a lot of moves that are going to be happening with the Eagles this week. Um, and I think it's going to be an exciting um, exciting time for Eagles fans, to say the least, because I think I personally think a lot's going to happen, and that's what we're going to get into here. So to get started, um, we said we had a couple mock drafts. So, uh, Masley, um, do you want to start us off with – who you think the Eagles are going to be taking with our first pick. So Matt, this is, this is, this is one of those picks where it could go a, a ton of ways. Um, if Jalen Carter comes to us, we're taking him. That's, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Personally. Um, a lot of people think Bijan. That's what you think. I personally think we trade out of this and how he goes with his guy that, He's either going to – he's. I don't think he'll go with the old lineman because that just doesn't make any sense for Northwestern. But the other guy, um, I, what's it? I cannot pronounce it, but it's a, a – it's it's too it, – it's a – I can't – and well, I, I'm going to try my hardest to pronounce it correctly. Um, <laughs> I, I am so – it's it's a hard name. So, but Anna Dimtiwa Adamor. I can see us trading out of he loves him. How he runs a fourth a four nine or a four four nine. Um he's two he's two hundred and eighty two pounds. He's like a fast D tackle. Um I think it's is this perfect the guy problem. I sent you the video of? No, no. No, he's that was a different guy. guy. Oh that guy ran a it was a D tackle that ran a uh three nine, I think. That's your pick guy that you think. Yeah, that's my that, that's gonna be my seventh round pick. That, that's that's your that's your oh that guy? Oh you're freaking my lotta. But yeah. um no, I just I more think that not per se I have a certain player in mind, but I think we're we're gonna go D line um in the first round just because it's just it's the Howie thing to do. I don't see us ever taking Bijan. I don't see us ever taking a, a corner or a safety in this position. I mean, obviously we sign our corners. I just just I just don't see I just don't see him taking any anybody but an O-line or D-line guy in the first round because that's who how he is. And other than taking wide receivers, which he has the past couple of years, since we're all seven that he will not take an RB, which you're going to say right now. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, I'm going to jump right back at you and um, give you a few reasons why I think otherwise. So okay. first of all, I want to make I want to make it clear that I don't necessarily think we're going to take Bijan at 10. I think there might be moves made to get Bijan. I just don't necessarily, I don't necessarily, I'm not sold on him getting picked at 10, but I am pretty sold on him getting picked. Now, second, secondly, I want to point out that I think people are underrating. Maybe I'm overrating. I could be wrong, of course, but um, I think that in the past few years, we've seen a change in the way that Howie has been building the teams. We all know the classic Howie that always goes O-line, D-line, doesn't value linebackers or running backs, and, you know, uh, picks up those, uh, you know, the linebackers and the running backs in the the low rounds, middle tier, whatever. We all know how Howie traditional, traditionally picks, all right? But my thing here is that I think, to me, the, the Rager pick we made over Jefferson scarred Howie. I really do. I genuinely think it's guard Howie. And I think since then we've been seeing Howie make the moves that not only, you know, going after the the big name guys and, you know, getting SEC guys and going out and getting AJ Brown and, you know, Devontae Smith and Jordan David and Kobe Dean. Like these were all picks that we never saw Howie making three, four years ago. Right. And these moves, I think that Howie, has done a better job of listening to what the fans want, first of all. And second of all, kind of jumping away from that, you know, ego view of trying to pick who he thinks is going to be, you know, the smart guy and just going after that guy that's going to be a playmaker and a difference maker. And to me, I think that I, you know, I saw some notes from Howie and uh, Bijan's meeting that they had uh, pre-drafts and, um, 
how he insists that Bijan made a really good pitch for why he's not going to just be a running back to pick and why he's not. Bijan is aware that how he doesn't pick running backs. Like I, he even mentioned it in the, in the meeting, but he explained to him why he should pick him and why he's not just going to be a running back to pick. And when I put it into perspective, I personally think that, you know, if you look at, you know, what the 49ers did last year by getting Christian McCaffrey and the boost that they got, you know, um, I think that was kind of a blueprint to the league that, you know, nobody really wants to pay the running backs because they're a dime a dozen. But adding that difference maker does make a big difference. It obviously does. And with the offense that we have with Jalen Hurts, who's at an MVP level, you've got A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, who are top tier wide receivers. You got a top tier tight end in Goddard, and you've got probably the best O line in the league. If you add Bijan to that offense, I mean, I can't think of any way to stop them. And on top of that, Bijan's not just a guy that can run up a running back. He can he can line up in the slot too. He can catch balls out of the backfield, which we haven't had in a while with Miles Sanders. So like, this could really make our our, our offense incredibly dynamic with this pick, which is why I I've kind of gotten sold on Bijan and I wasn't in prior months. But with all that being said, um, you know, I just think that people bank too hard on the regular Howie picks. And I think that we might see a bit of a different Howie uh, in the future, including um, Thursday. So uh, with that so, being said, so to that point, yeah, go ahead. All right. So, so two points to that real quick. So if you want to, if you want to go with, Another Howie pick that I know we got we wanted Smith, but like he 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 never drafted linebacker, so he's never going with Parsons that draft. That's what that's what makes me also think he's never going to get like a linebacker in the first round. I don't, and I also, if you want to go with a guy that's that's going to probably be there mid second round or near your thirtieth pick that you could trade back from, you can get Jameer Gibbs. He's a freaking beast from Alabama, four three eight type guy. Um, his athleticism jumps off the gym. I know he's a Bama guy, but he, he's compared all to Alvin Kamara too. Um, he's kind of under the radar just because Bijan is that guy and is like a, obviously he's a better running back overall. And he should, he has shown a more elite pass catching and more elite. It's everything in general, but I just don't know. I just don't see it. Like that pick is too premium that I just think that he rather get the best. If, if it's a, if it goes the way we think the draft's going to go, which is more QB dominated and toward the top end the draft we we a lot of people think there's gonna be five qu- quarterbacks picked in the top 10 i personally don't but at, there's at least gonna be three so even if you think seven seven of the picks aren't they're just it's just so it's just like so much room for the top and dn guys that usually will go first overall or in a top five position where they're just not going to get drafted this year I just, I just don't see him doing it. I, I personally, I, I see all the reason you say I will be happy if he gets Bijan because that would be amazing. But I just don't see how he's doing it. Not for the reason of he doesn't think it's going to make the team better. I just think he'll see better value down the road, or he's happy with the running backs that we have. Well, I got two things to that real quick before we move on. Um, yeah. One, the thing with Jameer Gibbs, uh, that's that's where you get into Howie territory because. The, I really think the only way how he's making this pick is if he really feels that Bijan's a difference maker. I really don't think that how he values running backs that high. And I don't think he just wants a running back just cause and Bijan, whether he's that much better than, than Jameer Gibbs or not has the hype around him, has the image has like, he already has it like kind of set in stone. So like if how he's going to make a pick at running back, I think it's Bijan or nobody. So I don't think we're going to, you know, I, I think it's just a Bijan thing. I'm kind of trying to push away the fact of the the whole running back thing. I almost want to ignore that because I think he just wants Bijan. But um, on top of that, I do think um, he thinks that our running back is our running back field is great. We did like people are underrating the fact that we got Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny could be a starting yeah. back for almost any team. And we got him for a million dollars which is kind of what also makes him expendable if we were to get Bijan, of course. So, like, you know, if we weren't to get Bijan, we're not going to be hurting in any way, of course. But I think that out of all the picks we can make to get immediately better, I think he's the one. But um, 
so now that I've got all my my spiel out, um, who do you actually have the Eagles taking at ten, or do you have them making a move? If Carter's there, I'm I'm taking Carter every single time. Um, I personally don't think he will be there, so I think they move out of it and they take the northwest the, the, the northwestern d d d d, d, d tackle that I mentioned before. But I if Jalen Carter falls us, we're taking him a million percent. There's no question in my mind about it that we're taking Jalen Carter. That just that just makes way too much sense. Way too much Howie. That's that's the most upside you're going to get in the draft. Even with B. John being there, if Carter does fall to us, which I don't think he will, because it, the Bear, the Bears have just made such good moves, we're gonna have. I think if we're gonna go for, I think we either get ten, get Carter, or we're gonna move back and get the Northwestern guy. And I can't pronounce. You keep his saying name. the Northwestern D tackle. There's, I haven't seen any Northwestern D tackle in any first round mock drafts, so I don't know who I. I know Peter uh, Skrinoski, or I think I'm saying his name wrong, but um, he's an yeah. offensive tackle. This guy, I'm going to spell it out. <laughs> A-D-E-T-O-M-I-W-A, this first name. Okay. Well, I don't – I, I want to say here he's before been you, this guy. Yeah, but he's not going to be a first-round pick. I, he's I not going to be a first-round pick, especially, especially not a 10. Maybe 30? I think we move back and get him. At like twenty. So you think how he's just going to make another Jalen Rager pick? Is it's what not you're a Jalen Rager pick. That is I a Jalen Rager pick. pick. He's picking I, somebody that's not even supposed to be a first round pick. I I, I think he is on some boards. I think he's gonna. I think that's who we're gonna take. I just Jalen know. Rager was a first round pick on some boards too. Exactly. I don't. I don't, think I don't want someone that's gonna be a, a first round pick on a couple people's boards. I want someone that's gonna be a first. If you're picking somebody at ten, it better be a freaking playmaker. <laughs> He's not taking him at, I'm not saying he's taking him at 10. I'm saying he's he's going to – Even he's, anyone in the first round, anyone you pick in the first round should start the first year yeah. here in the league. He's a first-round talent. I think you're silly. <laughs> I, I think I think, I think think that's what's going to happen. That's just – Well, something. I did ask your opinion. I'm, I'm not <laughs> just – hey, I, you know, it is what it is. I just, you know, I – I feel like that guy sounds like he'd be more of a second round pick, but um he could he could fall. And I don't I'm not saying I want him. I'm just saying that's that's what I've seen. It's it's a Howie type move to take that guy. Yeah, well, um I would really, really hate that. But um, you know, that's not my decision to make, I suppose. I also, so. also kind of just want to be pessimistic because that's just Howie me ha- hating Howie of being Howie. Um, Howie hasn't Howie hasn't Howied since like I don't even know how long. Howie has been the best GM in the league for you know I mean since we won the the Super Bowl. He has been great. It's just you know I mean I just can't shake it. You're such a pessimist. <laughs> uh, I mean J- Jordan Davis didn't do that great this year. I mean I know we had we have Jordan him, Davis he, was hurt for to- like over half the season. That's fine, but he's not going to get sacks. This this guy gets sacks. He's like literally like you're not you're not literally take over for Brandon Graham. Like you're not supposed to get sacks at D tackle. You draft edge rushers for that. He's a small D tackle. He could go outside, but he's a, he's a D tackle. <laughs> he, Listen, I mean, I I don't doubt I I I don't doubt us taking a guy like that. I just don't see it at ten. To me. At 10, if we are going to draft at 10, which I personally don't, in my personal opinion, there's a part of me that thinks that we might not draft at 10 or 30. But you'd have to hear me out on that. Um, I think we will take a D tackle with one of those picks. Um, And like you said, it would depend on Jalen Carter. Um, Jalen Carter is most likely not going to drop all the way to 10. But if he were to drop into the seven or eight range, I could see us trading up. Um, now, if I he's not available, too. if he's not available in the seven to eight range, then I think there's a very good chance we trade back, which is what I said earlier with Bijan. Um, I mentioned to you that um, I heard some rumors about the Eagles being in on Jackson Smith and Jigba, and um, I don't buy it at all. Um, you know, I think that's just a smokescreen. 
for teams that are going to need wide receivers in case they need to make a move, uh, make them think that they want them. You know, obviously we've got good guys in position at wide receiver. We're not going to go out of our way to, you know, pull a guy like Jackson Smith off the map. Um, he doesn't really help us out that much. Obviously he'd be, you know, a playmaker and all, but um, I don't think that would benefit us or Jackson Smith. So in that regard, I think there's a chance that we might try to, you know, cause a smoke screen and maybe try to trade back with the Packers who definitely want him which would put us at 15 and that's where I think we would take um, Bijan. And then if you move on to the 30th pick, I personally don't think we're going to take that pick at all. I think in my opinion, and this is very easy to be wrong on. I think we might try to make a trade for Buda Baker. And I would like it. I would love it. I would love it. Um, the only thing that's going to come down to is the fact that Buda Baker wants to get paid as the highest safety in the league. Yeah, and gross. I'm not sure if how he's going to be willing to do that or not. But, you know, of any time for it to happen, we have an extra first round pick this year. We just lost our starting safety who led the league in interceptions. Uh, we have a we have a hole there. It would fill in a hole and give us a leader on defense. And he's only 27. He's right in his prime. Uh, he's just been an all pro. Everything seems to line up. And he, and on top of that, he also wants to make a move to a team that's going to be a winner. And uh, sorry, it seems that uh, Steve may have lost connection here. But um, yeah, to you guys, I just think that, um, you know, that he's in his prime. He's an all pro. Everything kind of lines up for us to go grab him right now. And, um, he's actually really looking for a team to to win with. And he's actually already even mentioned that he wants to play for the Eagles. So I think it would be a pretty cool move if we went and did that, you know, in, in terms of obviously the money thing is a bit of a problem, but, um, you know, it's like grabbing an all pro at, at pick 30. So, I mean, to me, I think it's a, it's an, if we have the finances for it, to me, it's a no brainer, but we're just gonna have to see. Yeah. So, You've I mean, heard you've heard I my hope, ideas here. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. No, I just I just don't ever see us staying at 30, especially if we're drafting someone at 10, or if we trade back from 10, pick someone else in the first round. I think there's too much value. I really want Ringo if he drops down to the second round. I would love to just pick him up because he was he was slated as one of the first corners in this draft, but he's been slipping off draft boards. He's been slipping off draft boards. You got Gonzalez up there now. You got um, who else? Who's the other guy? Freaking Witherspoon and Porter. Witherspoon. They all dropped in front of him. I mean, Ringo did have the best combine, but I think he's bet the played about the best talent. I think he's the best. I personally think he was the best corner in the draft. Um, another guy I want that might that might slip. He he might be go as far as the third. I see him slip a lot. Is Antonio Johnson, the Texas A and M safety? Um, I would love. I know we're gonna draft the safety somewhere in here. Um. I just don't know if it's going to be in a third. I know we don't have we don't have a fourth round pick, right? Uh no, we have uh two firsts, a second, a third and two sevenths, I believe. Yeah. So it's not it's not that I that's why I just don't see how he's sitting there. I know we don't need we just need I think we need um a safety at some point. And I think that he would be perfect. He's a hard-hitting guy. Um he's just he's a, a five-year guy. He's he just I think he's really talented. I thought he could have been like, not back end in the first, but like front end, more front end of the second type player, but he's been slipping down draft boards at all times. So um, that's another guy I think we're going to get based off of us not being at 30 or not staying at 30 per se. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, um, off of what you just said, um, you know, I think if we're going to go safety, I think, especially if we don't go after Buda Baker, which obviously is not a given. Um, I think that if we were to go after a safety, it would probably be in the second round, uh, just because um, safeties are relatively, you know, higher value usually in drafts. Um, this is not a very draft heavy, I mean, not a very safety heavy draft. So, um, and not a lot are expected to go in the first round. I think there's one or two. So I think there's a pretty good chance that we're going to get one of the, top safeties in the draft in the second round. Um, and I might be uh, getting ahead of myself because we had the 30th pick in the second round. It's not like we have like some great pick. So like 
that might come down to whether, you know, who drops down at, at, um, at 30, you know, if we still have that pick and someone like, um, uh, the safety battle from, from Alabama, you know, if he's there at 30, I could totally see us making that pick at 30. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, you know, if you can manage to get the best safety in the draft at 30, that would be great. And to my mind blownness, I don't even know what to say to it. I keep seeing a bunch of mock drafts having us getting Nolan Smith at 30, but I just don't see that being any bit realistic. No, I, he's been slipping down draft boards too. For what reason? I'm not sure. Um, I think he's a guy that you see slip down and you're just like, oh, oh yeah, it should be. Um, but then we also said that about Dean. We also said, I mean, we thought I we thought Dean was going to be everyone in the world thought Dean was a first round pick. So I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's and that's it. That's the crazy thing about like draft day. You're going to see guys. You're going to be like, well, I saw him up there like for forever, and this guy's all the way in the fourth round now. Like what happened? Um, and obviously, no, none of us have all the insider information and everything, but it's just how the draft goes. It's kind of like insane. It's that's the cool yeah, part about no. it. You never know what's going to happen. And on top of that, it's a pretty crazy draft this year. I mean, at least in the first couple rounds, because it's not like a specific position heavy draft. There's a few guys at just about every single position. And uh, that makes it interesting because it now you're going to see teams there. There aren't exactly a whole lot of guys that are just that much better than the next guy in this draft. But there's a lot of solid talent at almost every position group. You've got about, you know, four or five quarterbacks. You've got about three or four running backs. You've got about uh, three or four O linemen. You've got uh, three tight ends. You've got uh, edge rushers, D tackles. Uh, there's a few too many of them to count. Um, you've got only a few safeties. And uh, there's not a lot of people picking linebacker, um, you know, middle linebacker in in the first round. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that just feels like there's pretty much guys at every position. So this is a kind of team needy draft. Like, I don't think guys are – like, teams aren't necessarily going to be picking the best guy off the board every time. I feel like That's it's – getting I, at. I, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're getting. I, I feel like it's – I feel like it is kind of QB heavy just because – if I, well, it is obviously QB heavy, but it's it's the first four or five picks. Like, but I think that's just crazy. Like, there it, there's a there's a literal possibility that we could see like four QB. Like, it, it's a chance that we could see four QBs go in the top five. Yeah, like like but there's we also could a see. You might not see more than two go in the top five at the same exactly. time. Exactly, but there's there's definitely a very good. I mean, the Panthers seem to be taking Bryce Young. I know been. Rumors all the crap. I think it's been Bryce Young. He's been the safest guy. He's been, he's been. It, it's gonna be Bryce Young is gonna be the first pick. But then, then you don't know where the Texans are going. And if they're going to Stroud, you don't know if they're going to Richardson. They could even go with, they could because they have the 12th pick too. They could like, I know we we're talking about strictly the Eagles, but I'm just just like looking at this. It's just like we don't know. They're waiting for someone at 12, or they're gonna trade back up. If they like what what the Texans are even thinking, like maybe they'll go get their like their guy at two and then, and then wait back and see what quarterbacks remain. If Richardson slips or Levis slips or even this, um, what's his name? Hooker from Tennessee. I know that people, some people are high on him. I don't know what's going to happen. This is a crazy draft. It is. It is. It's definitely crazy. Kind of. It's like to happen, but um, do you have, do you have any late round guys you want to see the Eagles take or um, are excited about? In terms of late round, uh, I'm not too sure. I, I I don't know a whole lot about the group in the in the later rounds. Um, I mean that guy I mentioned to you, the video I sent you of that you know that uh, 280 pound D tackle that ran a four three. I mean, like I'd be I, I think that would be pretty dope to to get that in the in the later rounds. Um, because you know we do need D, like D line depth. Um, I'd like to see us in terms. I'll put it this way: I don't have specific guys I want to see, but I'll put positions that I want to see as drafts. Yeah. Um, in terms of what I think we need the most, I think we need. I think I do think the D line is our biggest need in general. I don't think we have heavy needs in any position. I think we're in a very similar position that we were last year. So, 
I think I would like to see us draft any edge rushers or D tackles in any round. Um, I'd like to see us draft uh, maybe a late round interior linebacker because we lost uh, both starters. I'd like to see us draft a safety. And then anything else, I mean, I'd be okay with, I suppose. But like, you know, those are the those are the four positions I think we need the most. And I told you that I think that we're taking a pick not out of need, but out of prize in Bijan. So we don't have that many picks. So we're not going to fill. I don't think we're going to fill in all those positions. And I also mentioned to you that I heard rumors of, uh, you know, some some rumblings of, uh, I forget what his name is, but uh, us taking some punter in the seventh round, um, which wouldn't be bad. Uh, I don't think you really need to draft a punter. I think that's a little bit of a waste of a draft pick because he, no one else is probably going to draft him. But like, you know, and punters are a dime a dozen as well. But we obviously had that punt debacle in the Super Bowl, and that's not something we want to run into a problem with again. So um, I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see us use a draft pick on him in the seventh round. Um, I know you mentioned earlier you wanted you wanted to trade for Buda Baker. I I would literally like cry if we got Devin White somehow doing a doing a trade in this draft. I love Devin White. He and the Kobe Dean would run this defense and make it so amazing. Um, that's my that would be ideal for me. I would I would cry if we got him at any time. Um, <laughs> I would I would love me some Devin White, but that's a spot that I think you're not going to get Howie to budge on. That would be why not? Why not? Why not? Because that's a spot that he is like. Not only does he not draft that, but trading for us for that spot know, is a whole other story. I can have I can have hopes and dreams too. And also, uh, the last thing to ruin your ruin your dreams is that the Bucks also came out and said that there's no chance they're trading him. But that also is, that could just be a smokescreen. But no, they're probably not trading him because why would you trade Devin White? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, a guy that I really don't want us to draft at 30 or anywhere if he were to fall in the second round is Joey Porter Jr. Um, he's not he's supposed to go off the board in the top 25, but I know he's young and has the, all the talent in the world. I just watched him at Penn State and freaking hated that man. He did not look good at all, and he's just been overhyped his entire life. And I just overrated his entire life, and I really don't like him. <laughs> I, <laughs> kind words from our host Stephen Masley. I'm sorry. I I'm just not. I swear I'm not a Penn State. State hater. Just watched a couple games, and he would just not. Good, and they were still hyping him up. He made like one tackle, especially the Purdue game. The first game of the season, <laughs> 130 yards to this little, little like little Cooper Cup. Like that's like my like ah, you're you're tight. You're like six one, tiny little guy, not going anywhere <laughs> ever in his life. But you know, that's that's who I don't want to take. That's what I that's what I will I'll be happy. If we just don't take him. Well, all right. Well, in in that regard, I guess I'll throw out somebody that I don't want us to take. Um, I'm not, I don't feel quite as strongly as as you do about it, but um, I if there's anybody I don't want us to take, um, it's the offensive tackle from um, Northwestern, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for his name one more time. Uh, Peter Skaronski. Um, and there's a few reasons why for that. Um. Obviously, I feel like I I shouldn't say that I would hate the pick because I don't think I would ever be mad at O-line, but I really think it would be a waste of a pick to pick an O-lineman, uh, to pick him at 10 because you obviously do need a, a replacement for Lane Johnson at some point, but it's too soon. We He just signed for three more years. We have him until 2026. Uh, I don't want our number 10 pick sitting on the bench for four years i just don't um you could say that you could try to you know um have him uh battle out a uh, position battle between him and jergens for the right guard spot i think that would be stupid as well because um all the steps are different as guards and o tackles i was an offensive tackle in high school um that kick slide that you have in pass rush is a completely different kick slide than you have on the inside uh it's a lot of different technique Personally, I wouldn't like to see him transition from tackle to guard. I think it would be easier to see Jurgens transition from center to guard. Um, 
So yeah, to me, I think this guy is probably probably going to be a beast. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he is, but um, I just don't think it would be beneficial for either side if we picked him at ten. And that's just one pick I think I want to stay away from. I actually, I actually, saw, I was looking at Vegas odds for the Eagles. Um, I saw him and Bijan as our two favorites to take if we at the ten pick. Yeah, um, that's that's what I've been seeing too. It's, I think it's, it's really odds on ten. But. It's. The whole draft is going to come down to, you know, who takes who. Obviously, this is every single draft, so this is pretty, yeah. you know, out in the obvious. But it's going to t- depend on who takes who going up to that point. And we have a lot of room to make moves up, down, side, and side to side, you know. Like, we can do whatever, pretty much. Um, we're not in a spot where we're desperate for anything. Uh, we're in a spot to get better here. But we also have moves that we could make for the future. So, like... It's this is definitely going to be an interesting draft for Eagles fans because this could go a, a lot of ways, as we've mentioned. Um, to me, I'm hopeful we come out of this first round with B. John Robinson and Buda Baker because that, I mean, can you ask for much better than that, in my opinion? But, um, I, I, I wouldn't be upset if we came out with Jalen Carter or Nolan Smith or, you know, um, who else did we mention in there? Um, Ringo, or I actually don't. I actually I wouldn't want Ringo in the first round. I'm sorry. We're not but, going in the. We're not taking him in the first round. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be terribly upset. I saw a mock draft from CBS that had us uh, moving back with New England to 14 and taking Bijan, and then moving up from 30 to 23, I think it was, and taking um, Battle, the uh, safety from Alabama, the number one safety, and that would be a pretty dope move too. Uh, there's yeah. just there's a lot of room for the Eagles to get you know creative and interesting in this draft, and I'm hoping Howie doesn't you know stay bland and stay Howie you know make it make a classic old Howie pick. I think Howie's grown as a GM. I think he knows what's really going to make the difference, and um, you know I think he wa- I think he wants that big name guy, and to me I think that name is B. John Robinson this year. Hey. I have one more guy I want to find that I couldn't find earlier. He's from Minnesota. He's a safety, but never going to find him. Anyway. Might be. Is it might be, Yeah. Howden. Howden. Jordan Howden. He's a freaking beast. I would love him. Um, He's going to be like a, he's going to be like a, like a fifth to seventh round guy. Um, I just remember seeing him light someone the F up. In uh in a Big Ten game, and I got really excited. <laughs> but uh, this is just these are just there's certain guys like I don't know a lot of the seventh round guys unless I like watched a game and I was like oh that's that guy like you see what I don't either, but that's that's someone that I that that's that's somewhere that I feel you know safe with Howie Howie's always been very good at picking from pretty much four to four to seven um, three to seven. He's pretty good with the late round picks and picking out guys that have some potential to turn into something. So, um, they're just it's it's shots in I, the dark. not shots in the dark, but it's there's definitely if you see you got to see someone someone to like it it does take talent to do that. And if we get an O line guy like later like that, that would be ideal. Um, yeah, I'd be fine with that. We do still need a backup guard. Um, you know. Uh, and we are going to need, you know, replacement for for Lane at some point. But like I said, I think right now is not the time, considering we just signed him to three more years. Um, the only reason I would th- I would be okay with us taking one of these guys, uh, these offensive linemen, for Lane Johnson is because we also lost Dillard, and I think people are underrating that aspect. We do not have very good depth at O line anymore. Yeah. So we don't have terrible depth. We didn't lose like everything. But we lost two key guys in Sayamalu and Dillard. And, um, you know, we've still got Driscoll and uh, and Toth, I think. Um, we've still got some guys in there. And like I said, I do think Jurgens is going to be starting this year at guard. Uh, but I think we should hold off on O-line. Focus on D-line and linebacker. We really, in general, focus on the defense. Yeah. But give me Bijan. <laughs> give me, give me. Do, you see, do you see like do you see where i'm now i'm saying i know this is going long but i know we keep getting back to Bijan. i just you see what i you're you're saying and like oh, absolutely. How- i know i know what we my my point to that is that 
I don't I think we're in a position where we don't necessarily have to take someone you need. Like if there's any time that we could take a prize pick and just take someone that we just want, it would be this year. So like and to me, I think that Bijan would put our offense over the top. I think it would be pretty damn awesome to watch. Uh, I hope Howie feels the same way, but if he doesn't, I'm not going to be upset about it because we still have Rashad Penny and Boston Scott and and Kenneth Gamewell. But gosh darn it, if we had a top tier running back on our team, I mean, I don't know how you could stop us. Okay, and then another point to that, but what might not be as it's not the same comparison because I know we keep getting back to this comparison. But you said if we take the if we take the best O line guy, how he thinks is there at ten. If he's the best alignment, best guy in the draft, and he's mm-hmm. sitting there at ten. If you think that's worth it to have a like maybe the best alignment, like the best guy in this class at ten, like I don't know. That's also like why I could see him taking him because if he falls that far, I'm not saying he's not worth it. I don't. I'm not positive. I haven't done my especially if it's Kaponic or whoever it is. I just don't. This is why I just see Howie just going the way. Not back. It's not how. It's not even a Howie tendency per se. It's just more like you. You're seeing that got that value there, and it's like, well, yeah, no, I get that, and like you know, it would be pretty dope to put somebody that good, you know, behind behind uh, to back up, you know, Lane Johnson. I just think to me, it's like I said, it's just too soon. Yeah, and um, but will he get you know, and it's not like it's not like you're getting this guy who should be a top three pick, but he's not because of quarterbacks. Like he belongs somewhere between fit like between 10 and 30 you know so my Hard point is, is that the best the best lineman in this draft isn't that you know wow you know what i mean like i'm not saying he's bad or anything he's probably gonna like i said he's probably gonna be a beast but like i don't want to make a stretch for that pick when i already don't want a lineman in this draft like I, next I draft, I, I am all for picking an offensive lineman. Sure. I just think this is a little too soon. That's all. Yeah. Um, I'm I, honestly, my, my hope is that we, we get Jalen Carter because I think he's, I would be more than happy with Jalen Carter. The only thing that worries me about Jalen Carter is that I think people are underrating the fact that he's going through like a midlife trauma and uh, you know, it's uh, it could be taking a toll on him. And on top of that, you know, someone who's already not at mental full strength walking into Philadelphia, if he doesn't perform at peak performance, I mean, the kid's going to explode internally. So, like, I, you know, that's the only thing that worries me with Jalen Carter. It's a stretch. Don't get me wrong. It's a big stretch. I just, uh, it do- that concerns me just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's fair. But um, do you have any There's our, there, on this draft? Um, last couple picks are just. I hope I hope we see that Minnesota guy. Obviously, I want Antonio fucking what's his name from A and M. Want that safety. Um, other than that, just just give me just give me guys that like. Give me like Bama guys that slipped in a draft, like that are underrated. I don't, I don't care. I, I, I'm, I'm very like, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but if we're not taking a D line guy in the first, first couple rounds, give me a guy that just slipped. Like, what's his name, Burns or whatever, or give me, um, give me, just give me, just give me a good draft. I'm, I, I'm nervous. I just, I just don't know where he's gonna go at all. Um. With the there is no pick. direction. We have no direction in terms of where he's going to go. There is so many different options. We we have no idea, which is kind of what makes it exciting. It is. It just. It's also kind of scary. It's definitely scary. But I, I I'm ready I for it. Know. I don't think there's anything uh, that could make us, you know, worse. So I'm not too. I wouldn't say I'm worried about it. Um, yeah. No, I'm not worried about it. I mean, we're in a good position. I feel like just about anyone. Worried. Just about. I I really would be. You know. I pretty. I feel like the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'd be fine with us taking just about anyone in the first round. Um, there's not really that many people that I real that I really don't want. Um, unless he doesn't belong there, like the guy. Yeah, I mean, I, there's obvious. Like, there's you know, like it's not like I want us taking like C.J. Stroud or something, but like, you know, like 
I, I, the, this draft has a lot of room. Like we, I don't know what else to say. We have a lot of room to work with this draft. And um, I don't think I'm too nervous about it, to be honest. I hope that we do better than not. Of course, you know, I, I have high hopes for it and that could be let down, but I don't, I think even at it's, even if we had like the worst draft in the world, it doesn't scare me in terms of how the season's going to go. So, you know, I mean, I just want to see how he makes some good picks. Yeah. yeah I'm excited. Um, excited to get into it. Excited to do the recap of it. And I hope, I hope we do draft a Northwestern D tackle at like 20, just so he could be like, Oh wow. There he goes. <laughs> I don't even want him. I don't even want him. Just, just, <laughs> just, just, just out of spite now. Just out of spite now. Just That's so I can be angry that we got him. Um, but yeah, love you guys. That's it. I thought you were. You sounded like you were about to say something else. <laughs> no, I, I, my mom's like yelling at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, um, but, but yeah, now I'm really excited for this, and uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, so we got the draft coming up Thursday. We're all going to be tuning in. I hope you guys are too. Um, hopefully you get a, a little peek of our episode before it happens. So you can, uh, you know, get an idea of where, where we're feeling, what we want to see. Um, and then obviously we'll be back with you guys uh, next week, um, recapping what happened in the draft, what we're thinking, you know, and then uh, we're going to start getting into the season. It uh, comes up pretty quick. It doesn't take long. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, It's been a good one, and uh, hopefully we will see you again next week. Peace. Go Birds. Go Birds.